with a K. Circus tents. Spaceships. Killer popcorn. Oh, no. Crazy cotton candy cocoons. All this and more as we dive into killer clowns from outer space. Shout out to my good friend Christian Blatt for his YouTube show as our sponsor today called The Blattcast. That's B-L-A-D-T-C-A-S-T, which can be found on YouTube and wherever you listen to your streaming podcast shows. His show focuses on pop culture with an emphasis on movies, television, and music. Some of his past guests have been Steve Carell, Seth MacFarlane, Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, Dennis Miller, and Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, and so many more. Definitely check that show out, guys. So Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The movie, it's spelled with the letter K to start, so you, you're expecting it to be a little bit outlandish, really, really fun. I mean, you see it right there. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I was completely sucked in. Um, it was definitely that 80s feel of a horror movie. I had such a great time watching it. I thought the effects were great. I was so in love with the clowns. The way the Chioda brothers created these clowns was, they're just incredible to look at. I did find their teeth to be a little bit intimidating. They were a little bit scary, but you know, if you're somebody who is afraid of clowns, doesn't want any clowns around your house, this movie might actually change you a little bit. This is one of those movies I've heard many people say the same thing, including one of our producers, Darren, who has a fear of clowns. I've always heard the same thing. This is the only movie that people with a fear of clowns can actually watch and mm -hmm. get through from start to finish. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of different merchandise that this film has created. So you might actually want to buy some of the little figures or, you know, the shirt, maybe something else as a piece of memorabilia for the movie. It was so much fun. So let's talk a little bit about the movie itself, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So we have this quiet little town that gets invaded by these clowns from outer space. I don't really want to call them aliens or their own entity, but they come down and start feeding off the townspeople, which what you love so much is the cocoons made of cotton candy that There's... they put these people into. And the killer popcorn. P killer popcorn. I mean popcorn. They I trap people in balloons. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically everybody's calling the police station to report these clowns, but nobody believes them. Mm -hmm. So eventually it leads to the one cop, Mooney, just basically ignoring the phone lines while the town is being ripped apart by these clowns. He did such a great job playing the, the sheriff. Was he the, the sheriff, right? He was one of them. No, yeah. he wasn't the actual sheriff. He was just another, you know, because they, they say in the movie when uh, the chief comes in I, yes. on Monday, you mm -hmm. can explain it to him. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of foreshadowing. So Mooney was actually played by John Vernon, who was really big in a lot of movies, but most people know him from Animal House. He's great. He did such a great job in this role. I literally at one point was so angry. I wanted to like kind of jump through the screen. Strangle. Give him a yeah, give him a little a little punch in the face, maybe. I was so angry with him. The way that he was like, okay, oh, so really you saw a clown and it killed somebody? Okay, these college kids, blah, blah, blah. Like, but I was so mad at him. That's yeah, but that that just shows his talent because mm. that was the character they wanted you to hate him. But the movie does really center around this one couple who were they were making out at Lovers Lane, right? Debbie and Mike, and they were actually the r role reversal of the typical trope. So Debbie was really the smarter one, and Mike was kind of like the dumber yeah. one in the movie. Did I you can, notice that? I can see that he was a little bit more ditzy and very mm -hmm. just bright and bubbly. So I, I get it, which explains why he hung out with uh, my two favorite character, the Terenzi brothers. This was definitely a staple in an 80s horror comedy, yes. for sure. I mean, it has 80s written all over it, not just the fact that it was made in the 80s. Um, scary to a point when you're younger, maybe, or if you have a fear of clowns, but there was enough comedy in there to balance it out. Um, it was really fun. So it was a, a fun comedy horror. Yeah, that I would definitely sense. put comedy in the first, so, like, in the first topic of it. So I wouldn't say horror. I wouldn't even call it horror comedy. I would call it comedy horror. Right. It's hysterical. Like th there's this one scene where the clowns go into a pharmacy and they're spraying shaving cream. Right. <laughs> I felt so bad for the owner of the 
The I pharmacist. Felt, I felt so bad for the pharmacist because I, he's got to clean all that up. <laughs> right, right, right. And they, they, they did the comedy so well with like the little guy, he's looking at the shaving cream and the bigger clown is standing behind him. So he takes the shaving cream and he's looking at it and he sprays it and it shoots the other clown in the face. <laughs> Little comedic things like that with the timing were great for something like that. Yeah. There was even that scene where they were outside and the the clown was doing like a puppet show. Yes. And that and something scary happens during that, but scary, but really funny. It was really, really a cute way for that scene to go. Attacked by a puppet shadow, which I think was a first for its time. But these mm -hmm. clowns just became so iconic from the 80s till now that it's just produced so much merchandise such as like, you know, you got the, the vinyl soundtrack, you got, you had the VHS release, you had the DVD release, then it went to Blu-ray, then you got your 4K. Uh, you, this movie constantly gets re-released in theaters. Mm -hmm. That's how much of a fan base it has that it still gets released almost every year, especially around Halloween time. Mm -hmm. there's, e there's masks. Right. There's little f action figures. You can get them on Amazon. Like everything is really easily accessible. Spirits to... Halloween has now been selling the big life-size animatronics. So you can actually get them really moving around and they got sounds from the movie with it. Mm -hmm. So this, this movie blew up for something that little in the 80s till now. It, it's just become so iconic in the horror industry. So it's popcorn quiz time, Dan. Here we go. First Colonel flying over to you. <laughs> We said that it was an 80s movie, but do you know specifically what year it came out? 1988. Whoa. Yeah, don't test me. Somebody did his research. <laughs> came out in 1988 and had a, a decent run in theaters in New York and Los Angeles. And then within less than a year, it was released on VHS. Whoa. You were just a dictionary of movie knowledge. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorites. Yeah. It's such it a classic. It is a classic. It's awesome. So the Chiodo brothers are the ones who did uh, this movie, and they were really big into stop motion animation films. Mm -hmm. If you take a look, you can look them up on YouTube or some of the featurettes on their past projects. You can see a lot of their earlier work. And for being young guys just getting into the industry, this stuff was pretty cool. I don't know if you had a chance to check out any of the stop motion shorts they've done. I didn't see the shorts, but I know that they w did work on the movie Elf. Mm -hmm. They also did that scene, the large Marge scene that was in um, the Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Movie. Yeah, and Elf was the uh, like the Rankin Bass style animation. Yes. Like the Norwal and the, the, yeah, they did all that. Yeah, but think about the fact that like you're saying, they're young at this time and it's, it's a family affair here. All of them had their hands in not only creating the effects, but they were also directing and writing the film. Right, and it's usually only the two that were getting credited when there was actually three Chiyoto yes. brothers. And mm -hmm. the third one, for some reason, just kind of gets pushed to the back of the line. A lot of the effects were pretty, uh, like, simple latex masks. Yes. A lot of latex masks. They, they didn't really rely on CGI too much, and the ones they did, you could tell it was, you know, the 80s. You had, like, the the ship that when it was leaving and it's spinning up in the air, you had some pretty bad cartoonish CGI in there, which just made it so much fun. Yes, I liked so, that. Yeah. I was smiling, it was so much fun. But the Shioto brothers actually, I think were quoted somewhere as saying that they really wanted this film to be practical effects more than CGI. It was like right. very important to right. them. And it actually helped with the budget. The fact that they were able to create the masks, you know, it was a $2 million budget, but most of it went you know, for other parts of the production. It didn't really need to be taken towards the effects. And I think they pretty much, what, they, they wrote, produced, and directed the, yes. the, the film. Mm -hmm. so, so they were, it was, it was like their baby. Right. You know, and like you can feel that when you're watching the film. I felt the excitement that the creators must have had. I felt like everybody probably was lit up to be working on this film. The, right. You know, the lead actors, like everybody just seemed to be having such a good time. And all the scenes are fun and yes. you can feel that. So it, it mm -hmm. kind of takes away from that scarier element. So it's not just a, a complete horror movie. You got that comedy thrown in there with these, mm -hmm. these cartoonish clowns that are also horrific at the same time. Like mm -hmm. it, it's just that feeling, it, it's hard to match that. Yeah, I mean, even the scene where the security guard in this, in the amusement park, right? The security guard in the amusement park, when he like melts down 
And then the little clown comes over and, the, and it's all melted. It looks like a pie or a sundae, a melted sundae. The baby clown comes over and puts the, sun, the cherry, the, cherry the maraschino there. cherry right on the top. Mm -hmm. I was hysterical, but it's so messed up. The guy's dead. It's like melted. But you're laughing because it's, right. it's just a fun, iconic cult classic. Well-balanced humor for a horror movie. Yes, it just works. Absolutely. So Mike was actually played by Grant Kramer, who just happens to be in Willy's Wonderland. A very small role, but he... Right? Wait, who? Right? He was Willy. Originally, before they all got possessed, wow. he was like this cult leader. So you see him in the scenes as, you know, putting the Willy's uh, mask on and everything. And That's him. He organized... Or he basically hired all the other like serial killers and messed up people that would follow his little cult. And that led to what happened. And you'll have to watch our review on Willy's Wonderland to find out the rest of that one. Talking more about the lead actors in the film, I loved Dave, mm -hmm. the other cop. I thought he did an amazing job playing that role. I actually wanted Debbie to end up with him. Are you familiar with the series called Feast? No. It's another independent horror chain. It is, there's three of them. And Feast 3, Dave's in it. Ah, so he's likes, he likes the horror genre, yeah, I guess, yeah. just like us. That's really cool. I really liked him. I love Debbie. I thought she was a strong female lead, which is something like in the 80s. Was that really seen at that time? Because like I was saying earlier, it was the flip of the trope. Like usually it's the dumber you know girl <laughs> and then the, then the guy that's oh, i'll protect you um you know i'll take care of you but it kind of flipped with this though yeah. debbie does end up in the balloon you know sure. yeah you spoiler know, saved but yeah and he, then you know but it's more so dave that saves her not really mike right mike's kind of like dragged along he's like come on mike you know <laughs> yeah he's the get bubbly, it together <laughs> mr bubbly goofball mm -hmm. but he did such a great job playing that role too well, so it was all what's, fun what's funny that you say that about mike is that you see the scene with him in the cop car with dave yeah and dave says about the relationship he's like i guess she goes for laughs instead of stability and uh, but on mike's <laughs> just kind of like did he really just say that yeah, I was surprised too. I was like, why is Dave talking about their past relationship? That's like, you don't do that. That's taboo. But right. I mean, I I feel like they ended up because then because then even towards the end when things were going on, Dave was taking the reins. He was like grabbing for Debbie, and Debbie was going for him more than Mike. It was kind of like Mike was like the third wheel at that point. Yeah. Did you even notice this in the graphic and the cover right here? You can actually see that she's going more towards Dave. You see that? She's like reaching her hands around him. He's protecting her. And Mike's like off, oh, what's happening? You know? It's it's funny. So it's like, it's it's saying that exactly what I perceived as the way that I felt about them. It's right there in front of us. So John Masari was actually the creator of some of the music. He created that entrance for Clownzilla, but that was originally created for a trailer of Jason part six. Oh wow. And it was rejected because the creator, the people that were working on Jason part six wanted something a little bit more cliche. So then it ended up working its way into this film. It's like an interesting, something really interesting to know about the music. So I gotta ask, was this your first time seeing the film? Oh, it was. Yes. Wow. I know. Don't, don't be disappointed in me. But once I saw Willy's Wonderland, there was, as I started to do the research, Killer Clowns from Outer Space kept coming up. So I was excited to see it. And I'm glad I did because now it is definitely top 10, one of my favorite movies. And really enjoyed it. Who would you say your favorite actor is from the film? That's a good question. Um, I, I Char like, character wise. I like Dave. Yeah. I really like Dave. He was a strong male character. He was really entertaining. He was fun. The Terenzi brothers were hysterical. They were, yeah, that's your favorite. favorite. They were, so, they had such a great comedic energy and timing with each other. They brought, they brought a whole nother level of laughability to the film. Slapstick comedy. Yes. So Killer Clowns from Outer Space is definitely one of my favorite 80s comedy horrors. It, it, it's such a staple for the 80s. Yeah. Um, those, those characters are so great for me. I can watch this movie over and over again. I, it's one of those movies you can't get sick of. Um, 
Yeah, now it just brings me back to my childhood, watching it on VHS and then just being so excited by the characters and all the silliness and goofiness of the whole thing and, and just, you know, running from these clowns with the characters up on the screen. Um, what did you think of the ending? Oh, actually, I really liked the ending. I thought it was fun. It pulled, it drew you in. Everything that was happening with the circus tent and mm -hmm. everybody's there. And this is how, this clown's going here. This clown's going here. You know, you have the Terenzi brothers coming in their, in their little ice cream truck trying to save the world. And then Dave comes. And, you know, at the end, I, I, I was upset because Dave disappears. But then I knew, I knew he was coming back. I mean, I knew he was going to come up and somehow it was going to be Dave survives. You know, it was, I, I just, I felt like it needed to be a lighthearted ending. You know, it needed to all work out in the end. See, I was kind of surprised that Dave survived. Really? Yeah, because I he was- I was totally expecting that. He was almost portrayed as a, a little mean in a way. I mean, yeah, he was an officer mm. of law and he, he was trying to do his job and keep things in check. Right. And he's like, sorry, I acted that way before. I was tough on you. But then at the same time, he made that comment where he's like, oh, I guess she goes for laughs instead of stability. So I'm like, wow, what an, mm, you know? So it's like, not a nice man. I was expecting him not to survive that, but. No, I, I well, you know that I really liked him. So I yeah. was happy that he survived. I also knew the Terenzi, this is hysterical, the Terenzi brothers, and they come out of the freezer. Right, right. It's so funny. <laughs> they survived. They were in the freezer the whole time. Don't worry, anybody. And then you I think everything is over and then bam, they all get the pies in their face. Yeah. Which makes you wonder, okay, so did they survive? at the end or did the pies get them because technically when those pies hit the other people it was like acid yeah it was melting them so you don't really know if they survived or not oh i didn't even think about that i just assumed that they were going to be fine right mm -hmm. i mean i love the effects of this movie there were like a few more really cool things about the film the latex balloon dog which i loved it was such a cute part of the movie mm -hmm. so they actually had to coat the legs of that latex balloon dog because it kept popping because of the pine needles on the ground. So cool. And that that gun that, that I loved with the, the, popcorn, the popcorn gun, gun. actually cost them $7,000 to make because there was a real compressor in there that actually shot the popcorn, real popcorn. It took them six weeks to make it. So it's like so interesting, like all the all the pieces, these all these moving parts working together to create this cult classic. I guess I'll have to ask you this question now is, <laughs> own it, stream it, Drown it in butter. Oh man, it's not going anywhere near butter for sure, but I, I definitely have to buy a copy. I mean, this is something that I actually, I hope that they re-release it in theaters. Cause I want- They do. Every year, every year, just about around Halloween time, you will find this movie at one of your local movie theaters showing. Um, what are you doing on Halloween this year, Dan? Well, I guess we're watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> So we want to thank you for joining us on this crazy adventure with some killer clowns from outer space. And we hope that you join us on our next episode when we do the Cult of Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> That's going to be a real killer. So tune in to Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks.